Hi everyone, welcome to today's mini web episode of B the Begonia Taco Night. Today I am going to recap on some Begonia info on the difference between a cane Begonia and a Rexamnus Begonia and then also sharing how I care for my Rex Begonias, also t uh, my cane Begonias. And if you're new here, welcome. This is my plant channel, Blue Lotus Gardens where I share my found knowledge and then also my plants with you all, as well as a little bit behind the scenes of my plant shop, Blue Lotus Gardens. All links are down below if you want to look into it. And I appreciate all that you have. Thank you so much. Um, and if this is something that you're interested in, I recommend reaching my channel, liking my videos, and then commenting down below. I always um, am happy to engage in the comments and then um, with your feedback, it really helps me grow this channel and the direction where I would really like it to go. I just want to quickly chime in and say I am starting my own little vlog channel where I just kind of have fun with it, share my creative side and just really just have a really good time with it. I enjoy being creative and then also um, filming it, editing and uh, sharing with you all. I think I've I've really met a lot of really cool people and I'm excited to see what it could lead to. I have um, a lot of creative experiences in what I um, used to do and I just kind of like want to tap back into it and we'll talk more about it on my second channel. Okay, so first let's recap on what a Rex begonia is and what a cane begonia is. I think this would be kind of a little bit helpful. Um, a Rex begonia is a commonly used term for a rhizomatous begonia and a rhizomatous begonia is a plant basically that bears a rhizome. A rhizome looks like a ruffled like structure with emerging foliage from it. So here is a good clear example of what a rhizome looks like. So as you see here, this brown um, piece is a rhizome and then um, the foliage and then the foliage emerged from, from it. So as you see here, so that's the, the structure of what a, so that's the structure of what a rhizome begonia is. And then the foliage emerges from it. So here's a good example of what a cane begonia is. This is the, Bogo the begonia griffin. Um, and there's different types of cane begonias. Cane begonia is referring to the, basically the stem type of begonia. It grows upright and with foliage emerging from it. So here is a rhizome. And then here is the cane begonia. Very different. They do both grow up, can grow up to a very large, um, very large, depending on how you grow it and where you grow it. Some right, some rex begonias can be placed outside in very shady, low light um, areas, um, and that's more for like a little bit more for like. Um, human type climates as well they thrive great um, and some cane begonias can be placed outside you just have to keep them in a very more like uh, low light um, like indirect area but they have to be containered uh, in a container in a planter so that way you can move it around if, if necessary um, but they have to be very shady it's in the if it's like um, it's not a outdoor type plant but it definitely can be on your like covered uh, patio um, with minimal light coming through it it'll be fine um, just make sure with pests uh, that you uh, are keeping up with it so that way you don't carry pests inside and outside if you're doing that I tend to do that and my plants are pretty pretty well they are I, I live in a I live in zone 8 uh, so that's how uh, you can determine our weather patterns and as you've been seeing from our videos uh, we've, def we've definitely had uh, funky weather well it's Texas it's always funky <laughs> okay so for care we're going to talk about lighting watering 
humidity, and then also propagation. For lighting, you want to um, look at where you're you're going to place, determine the, the way uh, the lighting source is in that area. Um, I have mine in a bright indirect area, and what that means is that it's inside, it receives um, light from a west west facing window it doesn't um, be it doesn't get affected by the vents nearby so that way um, it doesn't damage the foliage as you see here is my plant and it's receiving bright and direct light it is on the window seal this is like my west facing window my west facing window might be different from yours but this is how it receives a lot the light from it. This one's doing really well. Some some plants will grow faster than others and that's okay. You just uh, see what works best for that plant. Okay, so next um, we're going to talk about watering. I personally uh, bottom water my plants and what that means is that I keep them in a clear tote and I submerge them in a little bit of water, about a fourth so that way they, um, I can gauge about how much water it's going to need to take from that point on. I keep them in a more like dry to moist soil medium so that way um, that's how I take care of it and I usually, uh, once most, most of all of them get to a point where they're all like pretty dry on top, that's when I con collect them all and then I place them in a container and I water them all and that way i know and i keep them on a routine that way and the way the reason why i bought i bought a water it is because when i was first collecting begonias um i noticed that every time i watered it i would damage the foliage and so to avoid that uh, since they really have really pretty foliage i um noticed that they can receive being watered from the bottom and that source is from the roots so the roots are absorbing all the water that it needs and you can just basically like pick it up and if it feels heavy you just um, move it off to the side and let another one that's dry in there and then you'll see like it'll absorb all the water and then the top also shows if it's moist or not okay so next we're talking about humidity um, I think this one has always been a really tricky one and because everybody always wants to know how do I add humidity, how can I increase the humidity, and that's basically by grouping them. If you don't have a humid source, um, like a humidifier, or um, if you're not in a humid cli climate, or like if you don't want to keep them in a cloche or in a... Uh, a cloche is like a glass do a dome, uh, or if you don't want to, you don't have a terrarium, or don't want to keep them in a terrarium, um, grouping them is can be ideal. It's not the best source, but it is ideal. Um, that creates transpiration, which creates humidity between the plants. So the plants basically create themselves a little humid environment for themselves to thrive in. That's just how they work. Um, but you can also uh, increase your humidity by placing them in, in uh, if you have uh, a humidifier, placing them around the humidifier, um, making sure that the, the moisture in the air though does not touch the plants because if it does, if it's too close to the humidifier, it will start to rot your leaves and that's because um, the humidity in the, in the air that's still close by will catch onto the foliage and then cause this thing called leaf rot which basically rots the leaf from too much moisture exposure causing the plant the, the leaf to die. I personally um, have been very more like relaxed about the humidity with my plants and so I just kind of have been um, allowing them to see if I could th keep them in a more low low humidity. And basically, I have it in like this much, like 51%, and they're they're doing well. They're growing. Um, they can be placed in a higher humid humid environment, but I'm also using this room right now to uh, keep my baby chicks. So they're in a far part of the the room where they where uh, 
the plants and the chicks do not meet. That's how I keep it. It's basically 51%. If it's if not, I use my humidifier that I bought from Target that was like 30 something dollars. Um, and I keep it in my grow tent and I just keep it on full blast and it'll, the humidity will rise like 80% and I'll just, it'll just stay like that for like a day or so if uh, with the fan still going on. Next, we're going to talk about propagation. So propagation is um, fairly something great with pop with begonias. I think they were just meant for propagation because they are um, asexual. So asexual means that they reproduce on their own. So naturally in, the, in their own environment, they once their foliage drops in the wilderness, they just basically reproduce themselves um, from the inner part of the leaves where the veins meet. As you see here, this is how a very clear good example of what it is. Um, and um, so it's forming from the inside of the, the foliage as you see here. Um, and then also in the back, if you see them um, forming out like this. And that's because um, it's asexual so it's reproducing also itself from the the stem part of it so the stem is basically where it's all like connected sometimes when you're water you're propagating them by water you'll you'll see by like the roots on the end of the roots that there is like little babies right there um, and then sometimes in soil they just emerge from here i think it's just they naturally know where to go um, I'm not a botanist or anything like that. It's just my theory. But you can also um, cut off this leaf uh, from this point on and then just keep propagating it. And so as it keeps propagating from there, cutting off the leaf and keep going. These are, these are my begonia taco nights. I've had them for like, for a long time. They're great. Um, I got them because I got one propagation because I really like the name and then I just really enjoyed sharing him and growing my collection of begonias and as you see now I have more. Um, here's also another example of how they propagate asexually and this is the rhizomatous one so you could um, so you so you know and uh, it just propagates from like that. I keep them in a uh, in in my grow tents at times, which is in like a twenty percent um, growing environment. Or sometimes I keep them in the blue, white, blue, white, red lights, and I have that on the timer for like um, six to twelve hours. So some of them will turn off at six hours of the day, and some of them will um, turn off uh, at twelve at the twelve mark period of the day. <clears throat> and then when you want to propagate a cane begonia, um, it's a bit more simple for people to start off with this one for propagating because you could just um, cut off um, a piece of the stem right here, make sure it's not too woody because then it, like this part it won't propagate, but this part will. Um, it just takes longer because woody, woodier stemmed propagations are a little bit harder. So you just uh, snip off a little bit right here, or you could snip off right here as long as it's underneath the node. Also, re also in for a begonia called a knuckle, so that way you know. I basically remember it because it looks like a knuckle, like. So. Um, you want to cut underneath here, place it in water in about roughly one or two weeks, depending on how you're caring for it. Um, changing the water every other day, you'll see uh, the roots emerge and you can then place it in your soil, your preferred medium. Um, I keep mine in soil that are very airy. I use Fox Farm soil. Um, and then I, uh, the, I use the, the rainforest one and then I just add a little bit of perlite to it um, and keep it like that. They all seem to like it. I bottom water them and 
they uh, do fairly well. When you're pro also propagating them, you want to make sure that their uh, medium doesn't dry off. Their medium doesn't dry off too much because then uh, you ha do have a, a risk of it dying off. It doesn't have any more nutrients, and they do like a little bit of moisture, so that's just how it goes. And then our experiments that we've basically learned now that we can chop off a little bit of the... There we, go. we learned basically from this experience of this begonia taco night that we can also propagate it by rhizome. So you want to make sure that you cut off the rhizome from a part of the begonia and then allow it to callus off. And once it's calloused off, um, you then place it in soil like I have here. I have it in a little plastic cup. It does not have drainage holes. So make sure that yours does. So that way you're able to allow the, the moisture to, in the soil to dry off but it's growing it's doing well it has little growth points i'm keeping it in very minimal light so that way i i this is my experiment and i want to see if they thrive in the very mo most minimal care that i can give them to that's why it's taking a little bit longer for this experiment to go to uh to uh flourish uh usually the begonias will definitely flourish like that because i keep them in the grow tent and they just quicker uh they grow quicker like that but as you see here this is how it is and in due time i would say maybe in a month or so um it'll definitely have more fuller foliage and what i'm going to do is once our experiments are done definitely look onto our website and in the trade group sec section for the groups You'll find it there um, for you to either by trade or I'm just going to um, give it away. So that way you can enjoy it as well and have fun propagating plants as well. All right. Thank you all so much for watching my video on my begonias and just really sharing them with you all. I really love plants and sharing my plants with you all and growing them and how I grow them, helping others grow. Um, we all live in various different parts, so all of our different growing experiences are different. So that's why it's great to share your experience. So that way we all kind of grow together and learn from each other. It's a learning experience and I think that's amazing. Thank you all so much for my new subscribers. I really appreciate that. And my new members on my website, thank you. Um, I will be posting trades on there soon, so definitely sign up and that way we can do trades on this upcoming spring and have some fun plant mail coming up. Uh, it's free to join. I also give discounts and just really have fun with it. I think that's great and share my found knowledge and then other people um, are also welcome to write their blogs as well on there and share their experience with other people. All right, y'all have a great day. Thank you all so much for my new pa for my Patreon members and also my all, all my new members. Y'all are so amazing. Thank y'all, bye. <laughs>